The Great Ocean Road covers some of the most spectacular scenery in the world. It winds past the magical Twelve Apostles, stunning stretches of coastline, iconic surfing beaches, lush rainforests, misty waterfalls, and seaside villages. Few other roads in the world can boast 240 kilometers of such awesome beauty as can the Great Ocean Road. The coastline is magnificent. The original inhabitants of this region along the Great Ocean Road were the Gunditjmara and the Wathaurong people. These indigenous people have a very deep relationship with the land and the sea. Every aspect of their lives is connected to it. They have a spiritual, physical, social and cultural connection with the land and the ocean. And their lives are closely intertwined with these elements and the forces of nature. This vital connection is expressed in every Aboriginal art form and ceremonial performance, whether it be theatre, dance, music or painting. And they have lived in awe and wonder of the beauty, majesty and power of this fabulous coastline. The Great Ocean Road region and its diverse ecosystems teem with wildlife. Some of it lives nowhere else in the world. Along this coastline, it's common to find iconic Australian animals like kangaroos and koalas. The Great Ocean Road region is sprinkled with seaside villages, surfing communities, resort townships and regional hubs. Names such as Torquay, Anglesey, Aries Inlet, Lawn, Apollo Bay and Port Campbell are popular destinations along the road. Vincent van Gogh said, the fishermen know that the sea is dangerous and the storm terrible, but they've never found these dangers sufficient reason for remaining ashore. The Great Southern Ocean is often windy and stormy, even along this beautiful coastline. This week, we drive along the Great Ocean Road to explore why more than five million people a year visit this part of Victoria, Australia, and how spending time surrounded by the wild wonders of the ocean is good for us all. Research is finding that even brief experiences of awe, such as standing on a beach and looking toward the horizon of the ocean, can lead us to be more attuned to the common humanity we share with one another. This morning, I climbed down the 86 Gibson steps to the beach here at the foot of the Twelve Apostles. We had to time our visit here to low tide, as the sea is dangerous, and at high tide, waves smash against those cliffs that are 70 metres high. Today, we spend more time working and commuting, and less time in wild places like the Great Ocean Road. Join me on a journey along the Great Ocean Road to learn more about the 3,000 men who laboured with their hands to carve this iconic road from the mountains and to understand how the enormity of their sacrifice and the greatness of the landscape combine to fill the soul with awe and wonder. This is the Great Ocean Road in Victoria, Australia. About five million people every year travel along the winding curves of this road. One of the world's greatest coastal drives, for the past 80 years, it has drawn visitors from all over the world. The Great Ocean Road brings people to the edge of Australia, where the waves of the mighty Southern Ocean ceaselessly roll onto beaches or roar at the base of dramatic cliffs. 
The Great Ocean Road officially begins here at Torquay and spans some 250 kilometres to just outside Warrnambool. Construction on the road was started in 1919 and completed in 1932. Torquay is an appropriate gateway to the Great Ocean Road, as it has always had a close relationship with the ocean and a strong surf culture. It's recognised today as the home of Australian surfing and where iconic brands such as Rip Curl and Quicksilver began. The Australian National Surfing Museum is located here and is the world's largest beach culture museum, a fitting reminder of the close connection it has with the ocean and the road that winds along its rugged shore. The Great Ocean Road is a masterpiece of human achievement. It was built basically by hand, with help from a few explosives to break rocks. More than 3,000 men worked to build the road using little more than a pick and shovel. Well, it was built by soldiers from the First World War. Tough fellows they were. We call them diggers in Australia. And these men were, were big fellows mainly that were used to hard work and they picked these particular type of people who could stand up to the vigours of outdoor life. Uh, they loved do doing it because they weren't inside. Now, this was during the Depression mostly and most people were out of work and they were struggling to find work. But when these fellows were given the job to work and build the Great Ocean Road, they thought it was Christmas. They, they were getting a good income, married men, a lot of them, so they could support their families. There was diggers that fought in World War I and were used to tough conditions and uh, they had a great camaraderie. Now, as you can imagine, in the, in the war, they, uh, they all stuck together in thick and thin and when they were discharged, they were on their own and they had to make up their own uh, uh, mates and this was very difficult for them to uh, change into civilian uh, uh, life. But when they worked on the Great Ocean Road with all their cobbers, uh, they had that same camaraderie that they had during the war. This sculpture, named The Diggers, shows one of the workers handing the other a drink. It reflects the great Australian mateship that was not only a part of the building of the road, but was so often on display in the First World War. The sculpture is set on a plinth of rock, especially brought here from Port Ferry. The Diggers overlooks the Southern Ocean and the Great Ocean Road. Now, the difficulty they had when they were building the road was the rock. Now, they had to drill holes in the rock for a start. They just drilled it with a, with a, a chisel and a hammer and blew the big stones down over the side of the cliff to the sea. Now, when they did this, they made all the side of the coast bare because they'd pushed the grass, the scrub and everything off and all the rubble went down to the beach. So it looked pretty hairy, nothing to stop your view between the road and the beach. Now, these fellows who were blasting really upset their mates because a lot of them were shell-shocked and they'd just come out of the trenches. and. Uh, when the blasting went off around the road, it really upset them. The challenges they had when they were making the road was mainly the terrain they had to work in because it was right along the cliff face of the mountains that ran right down to the sea. And they had to tie themselves to trees and lower themselves down on rocks, dig a hole to stand up in the stand upright and the digger that was beside him did the same and then they dug a track between the two and that's how it all started. And when they got around to the road a bit, there was a couple of old farmers and they said to the farmers, uh, would you like to contribute, give us a few bob to build the road? And they said, look, we haven't got two bob, but we'll work on the road for a mile in this area for nothing. And that's what they did, these farmers. And that was a type of patriotism they had building the Great Ocean Road. All the little towns and villages along the Great Ocean Road ran dances and different things to make money, 
to pay the diggers because they knew it was to their advantage that they're going to have a beautiful road, this great ocean road that would give them free access out of their village. Now, this great ocean road is not only a memorial to those who dug it, but uh, it was a memorial to the fallen from the First World War. The Great Ocean Road has been called Australia's largest war memorial. Many visitors to the Great Ocean Road don't know the history of how it was constructed and why the construction of this road is so special. They built the Great Ocean Road because it was to open up all the little settlements around the Otway coast. Prior to the Great Ocean Road being built, they were all landlocked, depending on the weather. Once the Great Ocean Road was built, it gave them access right through to wherever they wanted to go. The Great Ocean Road was built in 1919, it started. It was a concept of the Minister for Lands and the Minister for Repatriation to give the returning diggers a job. 3,000 men worked on the road, mostly return diggers. They had foremen who kept them on the job. Uh, they lived very, very well in, in tents, one man to a tent, and they were paid very well. They were paid 10 and 6 a day where they'd come out of the trenches at 5 bob a day and they were, were uh, really well off. It, it took about... 12 years all through, 12 or 13 years to complete the road right through from, from Torquay right through to Allensford, which was near uh, Warrnambool. Now, a lot of the road was in pure rock and that's where the tough bit came. Uh, one particular place is called Mount Defiance and that really defied them because it was pure rock. And the rest of the road, a lot of it was aggregate, which was pick and shovel work. And that's all I had basically was pick and shovel uh, and horses and scoops and wheelbarrows. And they had to do it all by muscle. Well, I was born here in 1922, lived here all my life, except uh, I was in the army for four years, mostly up in the Solomon Islands. And uh, it's a lovely place here because uh, we've got this great ocean road that we can move about on. Every bend you come around is different view and you've got the rolling surf and the moods of the sea changes. So ever, it's, it's an ever-changing vista and it's beautiful all the way around. We think around 80% of the world's population lives only an hour or two from the coastline of an ocean, lake or river. There's something about water that draws us and fascinates us. Our human bodies are about 70% water. And they say that the water in our cells is comparable to that found in the oceans. The ocean delights, inspires and intimidates us. When we think of the Great Ocean Road, we may think that the word great applies to the road construction. While the history and meaning of the construction of the road is important, it is the ocean that provides the meaning of the word great. We are surrounded by water, and along with air, it's the primary ingredient for supporting life. Water covers more than 70% of the Earth's surface, and 96% of all of this water on Earth is found in the oceans. In fact, it's so vast, we've only explored 5% of our world's oceans. From one million kilometres away, our planet resembles a small blue marble. Author Arthur C. Clarke once commented, how inappropriate to call this planet Earth when it's quite clearly ocean. Surfers are a constant presence along the Great Ocean Road, with world champion surfing events held at Bells Beach every Easter. Since the 1960s, surfers have flocked to Bells Beach. In 1973, the Easter event became Australia's first pro-surfing contest. Surfers have an intimate connection with the ocean, and many surfers have tried to articulate the feeling 
of riding the power of the sea. Pioneer of big wave surfing, Buzzy Trent, said one of the most famous lines in surfing circles. Waves are not measured in feet and inches. They're measured in increments of fear. An element of greatness is power. And along the Great Ocean Road, the ocean and bush that are so beautiful also have the power to make us afraid. The dramatic seascapes and spectacular scenery hide a dark secret. Because not only is this stretch of coastline among the most beautiful in the world, it is also by far the most rugged, hostile and treacherous coastline in the world. Cape Otway Light Station is the oldest lighthouse on the Australian mainland. It has operated continuously since 1848. Before Bass Strait was discovered by Matthew Flinders around 1799, ships had to sail around Tasmania, taking an extra week to 10 days. But sailing the waters between King and Flinders Islands and the mainland is still treacherous. During the early years of European settlement, over 500 sailing ships were wrecked along this coast. In fact, over 80 ships were lost between Cape Otway and Port Ferry alone. So this section of the coast can well be called the Shipwreck Coast. Virtually all of these shipwrecks occurred in a period of about 30 years between the mid-1800s and the early 1900s. Most of these ships sank at night or in a howling storm. In the Bass Strait, the mighty Southern Ocean is forced through a passage merely 90 kilometers wide and up onto the continental shelf where the sea bottom becomes relatively shallow. In these parts, the wind blows and swells of 10 to 20 meters aren't rare. The 86 Gibson Steps lead to the beach here at the foot of the Twelve Apostles. The cliffs tower 70 metres above me, and I can see large rocks at the base of the cliffs that have fallen before. The view of the sea here fills the horizon. The waves don't whisper here, but roar onto the sand. It's a wild place. It's a beautiful place and I'm a little bit frightened at how small I feel. All this great power and beauty fills me with an important emotion, awe. Recent research tells me that feeling awe like this is good for me. In the upper reaches of pleasure and on the boundary of fear is an important emotion, awe. Awe is an overwhelming feeling of reverence, admiration, or fear, produced by something grand, sublime, or extremely powerful. Recent research has shown that when we feel awe, we are more likely to feel a greater connection with others, to feel part of something bigger than ourselves. Researchers have demonstrated that even watching a five-minute clip of vast natural beauty, like the Great Ocean Road, helped people feel awe and change their behavior. It's not clear why this area is called the 12 Apostles. There's never been 12 rock pillars and constant pounding by the Great Southern Ocean means that some of the current pillars are very fragile. Perhaps the name was used by the locals because awe is central to the experience of religion. And when this view took their breath away, they could only liken it to a spiritual experience. The research showed that those who experienced awe in the tests were less likely to cheat or take money that wasn't theirs. And apparently it doesn't take much. Even just 60 seconds of looking at an amazing view such as this is enough for us to experience awe. My entire journey along the Great Ocean Road has filled me with awe 
from remembering the great sacrifice of the 3,000 returned World War I soldiers who built this road in memory of their fallen mates, to remembering the great sacrifice of the firefighters who saved families in the Christmas Day bushfires. And now I stand here with other visitors, one of the millions of people who visit the Great Ocean Road to soak in the awesome wonder. And my soul is singing. Then sings my soul. Yes, we've just completed one of the world's great coastal drives. It's the journey of a lifetime, a journey through some of the most exciting, enchanting, and exquisitely different landscapes in Australia. But as well as being an iconic tourist destination, the Great Ocean Road plays a deeper, more spiritual role. It's a reminder that we're all on a journey, the greatest journey, the journey of life. And there's a spiritual aspect to this journey. One of the most helpful ways of thinking about the Christian life is to see it as a journey. This is a theme that runs through the Bible. The Bible tells of the 40-year journey of the people of Israel from Egypt to the Promised Land. It tells of Abraham setting out in faith to leave the land of his ancestors and journeying to a place chosen by God. He didn't know where he was going, but he did know who he would be traveling with, and that was enough for him. One of the earliest terms used to refer to Christians was those who belonged to the way. They were seen as traveling on their way to the eternal city. Thinking of the Christian life as a journey through the world offers a helpful and vivid way to visualizing the life of faith. It reminds us that we are going somewhere, not just anywhere. We're on our way to our eternal home. It encourages us to think ahead and look forward with anticipation to the joy of arrival. One day, we shall finally see our Lord face to face. If you would like to start that journey, why not make that decision right now as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, today we have made a journey along one of the great coastal roads. The natural beauty, the coastal scenery, the history and heritage have filled us with awe and wonder. We've also been reminded of our journey through life and our spiritual pilgrimage. Please give us courage and assurance as we journey towards our eternal home and grant us the privilege of seeing you face to face. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen.
Our journey along the Great Ocean Road fills us with awe and wonder, but it also plays a deeper, more spiritual role. It reminds us that we are all on a journey, the greatest journey, the journey of life. And there's a spiritual aspect to this journey. One of the most helpful ways of thinking about the Christian life is to see it as a journey. This is a theme that runs through the Bible. If you'd like to start this spiritual journey, I'd like to recommend the free gift we have for all our viewers today. It's a book called Steps to Christ. It covers topics such as God's love for man, repentance, faith and acceptance, and what to do with doubt. I'm sure this book will bring you closer to Jesus on your spiritual journey. Remember to ask for your free copy of Steps to Christ by name. There's no cost or obligation. Steps to Christ is absolutely free. Here's the information you need. Phone us now on 048 1315 101 or text us on 0491 222 or visit our website theincrediblejourney.tv to request today's free offer. So don't delay. Phone us now on 048 1315 101 or text us on 0491 222 or visit our website theincrediblejourney.tv to request today's free offer. So don't delay. Contact us right now. If you've enjoyed today's journey, be sure to join us again next week when we will share another of life's journeys together and experience another new and thought-provoking perspective on the peace, insight, understanding and hope that only the Bible can give us. The incredible journey truly is television that changes lives. Until next week, remember the ultimate destination of life's journey. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away.